Welcome back to Outdoor Adventure Training. My name is Mikey Bell, and today we're slowing things down and focusing on recovery with a 15-minute mobility routine for the hips and hamstrings. If you've been following this channel recently, you would know that we've been pumping out those ski workouts left and right, and I'm not going to lie, my lower body is feeling it. We have a beautiful, cool, and wet day across the Pacific Northwest, and no better time to grab your foam roller and get relaxed and start improving your mobility. This 15 minute routine is pulled from our powder prep program where not only are we focusing heavily on building that strength and stability that's so important for skiing, but we balance it out every day with some self mile fascial release in the form of foam rolling and dynamic, active and static stretching. So you can do what you love for not just this season, but for many years to come, amazing for injury prevention and recovery so you can perform at your best on and off the mountain. For this routine, make sure you have a nice comfy surface to do this on. I have a thick yoga mat. You could also just perform this on carpet. You are going to need a foam roller and potentially some yoga blocks or other props like pillows, cushions, towels, anything that you can come up with and get creative for some of these poses to make it more accessible for you. As usual, follow along with the Outdoor Adventure Training app. We just have a few minutes of foam rolling, followed by a really nice stretch that I perform on my own quite often to really mobilize the hip flexors, quads, and hamstrings. We're gonna start off with foam rolling the quads. I'm gonna start on my right leg here, and I really would prefer if you tried this just one leg at a time, so the goal with self myofascial release is, as the name implies, to help releasing the fascia, but more specifically, we're improving blood flow to these tissues. And blood flow and blood is our life force energy, and that's what delivers all that vital oxygen and nutrients to help those muscles recover. So you should notice I'm rolling quite slow here, just from the top of my thigh all the way down towards the knee. You certainly do not need to pass through the entire muscle. You can focus your attention on the upper part of the quad or the outer part of the quad. Find those points of tenderness, breathe into it. So we're gonna stay on the same leg and just migrate that roller up towards your hip flexors. So I'm really trying to get into the pocket, the front of my hip here. If you're met with some resistance, <laughs> that is quite all right. It's very common for people to have tight hips. Yes, from training, but mostly from daily activities or inactivity sitting is really the culprit here. So I'm really working into those hip flexors. There is no hip flexor muscle. It's a combination of our quads and a bunch of other muscles that all play a role in hip flexion. Definitely starting to feel it here towards the end. Keep breathing. Then we're going to switch over to the other side, to the quad first. So I'm just working that full quad. Now notice right here and in the video, my knee is bent and that's intentional. Your quads do extension of the knee. So if your knee is extended, your muscle is going to have a hard time relaxing. So keep that knee even just slightly flexed. And that's going to really help you release those quads. Some more methodology to what we're doing. We're foam rolling first, getting some of that blood flow specifically to the quadriceps, and then we're gonna get into some static stretching and help those tissues open up and relax even more. I find this to be a very effective formula for improving flexibility and mobility quickly, but also over time for that long-term adaptation that we're going for. I've really found a juicy spot here on the outside of my quad. Then we're gonna move on up to the hips. So it doesn't really look like I'm doing much because I'm not. That's also part of the goal is to relax a little bit, but find that spot of tenderness in the hips 
And you can really get into this. <sighs> Laying on it and just trying to relax, get out of your own way. The propensity usually is for people to tighten up. Just try to relax. Let your body melt onto that roller. And do a little side-to-side -side movement. <sighs> you can also do this with a massage ball or a lacrosse ball, a softball. If you really want to get into some trigger point, maybe we'll make a video on that soon. Nice. Coming out of this slowly, we're done with our foam rolling segment and we're switching now to some more passive and static stretching. This is where you might want your blocks. I'm going to go left leg forward first and we're just going to find a standard low lunge. So our knee can certainly come over our ankle a little bit and that back foot can get untucked and I'm really looking for a deep stretch through that right hip. So again, if you're not that deep and you're way up here, having those blocks could be really helpful. You could also use your foam roller. I like to come down a little deeper and really letting those hips sink forward and really trying to relax into this position here. Keep your chest up, focus on your breathing. Couple more breaths. From here, we're just rocking back into a half splits. And this is going to be more of an active stretch. So very simply, I'm just pushing my weight back. And a few different ways to do this. One, you could work on just flexing and extending your ankle. I'll move that block so you can see. And this alone will deepen the stretch through the gastroc, your calves, and your hamstrings. The other alternative, I like to put my blocks up a little higher for this one. Inhale and lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale and fold. So this is more active range of motion. Still trying to stay relaxed. Great way to get really deep into the hamstrings. Nice work on the splits, half splits that is. Next, we're just gonna slowly sink back all the way on to that back leg. And this is where, if this is really deep, you might want to just sit on a yoga block or any other kind of prop. I'm trying to get the top of my ankle pressed into the floor. And I'm just sitting right here. You can put your hands behind you. You're gonna feel a deep stretch <laughs> through the top of that thigh, maybe through the shin. You don't need to go back super far. Although you can go back as far as comfortable for you. I generally just hang out right here and I'm working on intending this knee down. Doesn't mean I'm pushing really hard, but I'm looking for that deep stretch through the quad and the half saddle pose. If this is really intense. Prop yourself up however you need to make it accessible. You do not need to push to your limits here. Save that for our workouts. Nice work. So now we're switching to our low lunge on the other side. So I'm gonna bring right leg forward, left leg back, melting those hips forward. Focus on your breathing. Let those hips open up. Keep your face relaxed, your jaw relaxed, your shoulders relaxed. Trying to get our nervous system to chill out. Couple more breaths. with some fluidity, we're gonna move back into our half splits. 
So again, up here, and I can really just work on flexion, plantar flexion and dorsiflexion of the ankle. Or I'll put those blocks up high. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. My right hamstring is much, much tighter than my left. Something I'm constantly working on. Nice work. And then all we're doing is continuing this motion all the way back into our half saddle pose. Again, if this is too much, you can also just sit on your heel and that might be huh, definitely enough of a quad stretch for you. Or you can bring those hips all the way to the ground or sit on a block. I'm gonna scoot forward here just so you can see me so I don't hide behind the app there. I'm just coming back here. This knee definitely wants to lift off the floor Trying to push that down the best I can. Stay relaxed. Keep breathing. Great work. We're transitioning next onto our backs. You won't need your blocks anymore. I'm laying all the way down on the floor. I'm gonna bring my right knee in towards my chest and we're just hanging out here. So I'm gently pulling that knee and thigh up into my chest. We're looking for a subtle stretch through the left hip flexor. You also should get a little bit of a stretch through the hamstring of the bat, the bent leg. If you don't feel anything, another option you can play with is with your block or your roller, propping that underneath your sacrum in your hips. And that's going to get you a lot deeper <laughs> into those hip flexors. Nice work. You can bend that other knee. We're coming into a reclined pigeon pose. So I'm crossing my ankle. My knee is bent. I have this nice figure four shape and I'm pushing this knee away from me. Just right here, if you have really tight hips, you're gonna feel that deep stretch through the external rotators. If you wanna take it a little bit deeper, you're simply going to reach between that gap of your leg and you're going to wrap your fingers around the front of your shin and gently pull in towards your body. Again, stay relaxed, looking for that deep stretch through the external rotators, piriformis, TFL, glutes. Do your best to keep your hips on the floor, meaning you're not pulling in so your sacrum is lifting. If that's happening, you might just want to keep this other foot planted on the floor. A couple more breaths. come out of this super slowly and we're switching to the other side. So again, starting with pulling that left leg in towards my chest, already feeling a nice stretch through the right hips. Again, you could prop your hips up if you'd like to get a little deeper. I am doing a little bit of active range of motion with my left ankle. Sometimes I'll do this little ankle circles could feel nice. Work 
working on deep hip flexion. Couple more breaths. Nice work. We got a reclined pigeon pose. This is our final stretch. Way to hang in there. Again, you can just start off right here with this ankle over the top of your other knee. This might be plenty enough of a stretch for you. You could even use your hand to manually push that knee away. If this is not enough, you're gonna reach through, grab that shin. You can even grab the back of your thigh if you need something in the middle. Let that left hip open up. Just a couple more breaths here. And then we're gonna come out of this real slowly. Nice job. I certainly would encourage you to stretch more frequently, more often, and for longer durations. These 60 second holds and 15 minute routines are certainly an amazing place to reintegrate yourself into some more flexibility and mobility training. However, if you're looking for real lasting results, you've got to put the time in. Just like with anything else in life, nothing comes quick, nothing comes easy, at least for the quality results. I encourage you to spend more time on your mat, stretching, loosening up. If this was really difficult for you, it will get better in time, I promise. Stick to it, and we'll see you right here next time at Outdoor Adventure Training.